What's happening people, Woozy Workout here. Today I'm in the gym and I'm gonna take you through every stage of the race and give you my top tip for each station. So firstly, the race begins with a 1K run. Anyone that's done a high rocks will tell you don't go out too fast. It's um, the only time you're not compromised by another exercise, so it's very easy to get out and go really quick. That being said, um, take advantage of the fact that you're uncompromised and try and focus on running as smooth and with as best technique as possible so you're, um, you're fluid, you're relaxed, uh, and you're running at a considerable pace, but you're not um, pushing, don't let the adrenaline get too much. Um, remember the first run and the first ski, I count as a warm up buy in to the real race. Okay, so with the ski erg, what we want to focus on is smooth, relaxed, powerful strokes. It's um, once again very easy to think we need to go really fast and do inefficient strokes where we're not getting a, a full length. Uh, and that's, that's not going to be as effective. What we want to do is take a few short pulls to get it going, get the fan belt moving, and from then on, you want to keep your stroke rate low and your uh, power output high. Fall into a rhythm with your breathing so that as we get going, this is nice and relaxed as opposed to this, where I can get really panicky, so I can't take a full breath. Onto the sleds, and I can tell you, I've literally just done a workout with these, and I hate to break it to you, they don't get easier, you just get better at them. Um, so, top tips for the sled is, I prefer um, the elbow hold, where I'm pushing my shoulders through and I'm gripping the um, bars on the outside and then pushing through to generate power. Um, if you are a smaller athlete, uh, I would definitely recommend this. If you feel more comfortable with um, a shoulder a grip, so where you're gripping it with your hands and bringing your shoulders to it, by all means, go for it. I will, wouldn't recommend this position. I would say you can rest in that position, but pushing it is gonna make it a lot harder because of the, uh, the strength requirement through your shoulders and arms. Um, and then the little final touch um, that I have been experimenting recently with is just adding a little bit of, this is just sports tape, generic, um, around my elbows, if you are using that elbow grip, um, it not only makes your hands a bit drier from the sweat, but it gives a little bit of friction to grip the uh, poles, because they can get a little bit slippy um, when you're um, sweating. The other thing before I move on with the sleds is, I would definitely, definitely not go all out. Um, so each push you do, try and stop. I stopped sort of, I think, five steps short of what I could do in one go. Um, and that stops my heart rate from spiking up really high. Um, if you get your heart rate really high and it spikes during a race, then it takes a lot longer to recover than if you're just uh, sort of flirting with that red line, coming back down, push again, come back down. Um, and I, I think, I really do believe you only really have um, a certain number of those real uh, big pushes in you. And if you use it really early on on these sleds, then um, you're gonna struggle when you need it for those uh, wobbles and lunges later. On the runs um, after the sleds, both the push and the pull, um, I would say try and um, get going as soon as possible. You don't wanna spend too much time in the rock zone. Um, and try and get back to a, a normal running cadence, even if you feel like, oh my God, I might have gone out too hard, this really hurts, um, heart rate's high and your legs are burning. Give it at least sort of, 
about 200 meters to, to keep that cadence and see whether you can uh, bring the heart rate down, flush out the uh, lactic acid while still moving. If it starts getting worse, then um, try and change the pace, uh, take it a little bit lighter. But oftentimes you'll find it does really suck, that first little bit of the run, but you get back into a rhythm, uh, heart rate starts to come down, you start to clear that, um, that lactic acid and you've kept a better pace going uh, round. So that's my top tip for the runs after the sleds. So my top tips for the rope pull is, one, manage the rope, know what you're gonna do with it. Uh, so as you pull it back, are you gonna straddle the rope or are you gonna take it to the side? Uh, personally, I take it to the side, but uh, it does mean I make a conscious effort to um, whip it out to the side, um, chuck it out before reeling it back in. Uh, some of you may prefer to go between your legs. Uh, and then use your body weight. So when I go for a pull, I am trying to use as much uh, reach as far as I can. Come right up to the front, there, there'll be a box that you have to stand in, so come use the full length of the box, reach as far as you can, use your weight, so leaning back into it, and then it's a leg drive, pulling up until I'm standing up, keeping my arms straight, don't bend your arms too early, that's gonna cause uh, a lot of strain on the biceps as you walk it back, so keep your arms straight as you walk it back, shuffle back as far as you can, to the end of the box and then pull in with your arms to get that extra last reach. Then I'm flicking the rope to the side, to the side, reach forward again, pull it back, walk it back with straight arms till the end, pull in, flick, flick. Okay. Onto the burpee broad jumps. This, much like the sled push, you can really jack your heart rate up very easily. Um, so I would say trying to stay um, even throughout. So uh, as opposed to the sled push where you need to uh, use a lot of energy to, just to get the thing moving, try and be energy efficient with your burpees. So even if that means slowing the pace down and taking a steady rhythm, uh, I find this to be more effective than doing a bunch really fast and then having to um, recover. So um, I prefer you get into a rhythm, use the step method. So the step method, for those that don't know, um, you come down, you can step your hand, uh, your leg in, two feet step, jump, then come down again. Okay. I like to um, use momentum as much as I can. So after I take that second step, I go straight into the jump uh, and then rest at the end of the jump. So um, it looks like this. I come down here, step, step, jump. Okay, and then I can rest here, take a breather, come down, step, step, jump. Onto the row, much like the ski, you want smooth, efficient strokes. Um, I personally love the row because uh, it gives you a chance to sit down uh, and it brings your heart rate down a little bit, um, especially after running after the burpees. It tends to be quite high. Um, so I tend to push the run after the burpees because I know I can get a little bit of relief uh, on the row. Think smooth, powerful strokes um, and use the screen to your advantage. You actually can see your pace on here. So when you're practicing running simulations, um, have a look at what, what pace you're rowing at. And then when you're in the race, you can see, uh, am I able to hold that pace easily? Um, is this, um, am I on track? Um, so if you're finding it very hard to hold the same pace you do in training, then you know you might have come out a bit quick. Um, so taking it um, lighter will help you to the end of the race. If you feel like um, you're, fl you're still flying, you're, you're going at your, um, at your practice pace and everything's feeling good, then by all means, punch on. With the farmer carries, uh, there's not a lot to it. Hold on for as long as you can. Um, here, speed is your friend because um, you, the less time you have holding them, the less it's gonna tax you. Um, so even though 
it might get your heart rate up a little bit. You should be able to recover that on the run. Uh, I would go as fast as you can, staying smooth and not bouncing with the kettlebells. So um, if you're bouncing, you're gonna have to cause unnecessary uh, grip strength. So, uh, and then the other thing is, I like to use a hook grip. Uh, this is something I've practiced through uh, weight training and uh, doing a lot of deadlifts in the hook grip position. So uh, for those of you that it's foreign for, I would definitely try it first because it can be quite uncomfortable on your thumb until you get used to it. But um, all, all it is, is you wrap your finger around your thumb. So thumb comes in and slightly to the side and then the fingers wrap over the top. So um, you get, get a little bit more grip, I don't know if you can see that, um, grip there. And uh, yeah, try that. It might, because um, the, the handles are a little bit thick, and for those with smaller hands, that might not work. But if you, if you have large hands, give it a go uh, and practice it within your normal weight training just to get used to uh, that feeling. Onto the lunges. Uh, so this is a muscular endurance exercise, so much like the sled push, I like to stop a couple of uh, lunges back from your, your maximum, so not going all out in that first set. Uh, and then I tend to use like a, a sort of stutter step before going into the next lunge. That helps me kind of pace it into a steady rhythm uh, and then it helps me with my balance a little bit as well. Uh, as for the lunges, um, themselves, if you um, find that your quads are burning out, um, then try and take it a little bit more in the hips. So um, to do so, you push your hips back uh, and you actually bend over a little bit more and then drive off that back foot. Um, and then vice versa, if you feel more like your, your hips and your lower back is hurting, try and be a little bit more upright. Um, as you come down, start to step and up. Um, with the bag, they tend to be a little bit softer than um, like this one, and it wraps around your shoulders and chest. Sometimes it makes it a bit harder to breathe. So I like to use the handles to, to almost have it up quite high. Not putting a lot of strain on your, um, on your shoulders, you're not lifting the bag, but you're just um, it, uh, keeping it sort of off the front of your chest uh, and that'll help with your airflow. Last but not least, you've got the wall balls. In terms of technique, I like to go uh, about an arm's width from the, um, well they've got them on rigs, so about an arm's width from the rig uh, and then keeping the elbows under will help um, be more efficient. If um, if your elbows are out to the side, it tends to pull you down. The wall ball will pull you down and then you've got to lose a lot more energy lifting the back up and you tend to get a lot of lower back strain and it's a lot more shoulder dominant. If you can get the elbows underneath so that um, the ball rests just beneath your chin, then as you squat down, you're keeping your chest much more upright. You can use your legs to powerfully drive yourself up and then your shoulders to finish the movement. Uh, and that tends to be a lot more efficient. Have a plan going into the, um, into the wall balls, practice it, how you're gonna break it up. Uh, I like to do a big set to start, but not, um, not all out. Then um, lots of sort of um, medium sets and then a finish with uh, a big one at the end because you can, you can always push that a little bit more at the end. Um, but have a plan, even if it goes um, out the window by the time you get to it, you know sort of where, where you stand. Um, and it helps give you a little bit more confidence going into it. So those are my top tips. Now you just have to get out there and give it a go. Um, let me know how you find it, if you found them useful. Uh, leave a comment, or even if you didn't, um, let me know why and um, if you found more efficient ways of doing things. Um, the best thing about High Rocks is it's, um, it's so new and upcoming that there's not a set way to do things. Everyone's trying to figure out the most, um, the best way of doing it. Um, so by all means, um, share the love. And um, 
If you uh, are looking for professional coaching, I do online uh, remote coaching for High Rocks or other events. Uh, and I do in-person uh, and group training at Coactive Health. Uh, until next time, follow me on Instagram, Woodsy Workout, and I'll see you in the next video.